In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a 3D scene based on a 2D image. It's a very cool feature if you want to create a whole 3D scene based on an image because then you get so much free detail out of your scenes without having to have that much 3D knowledge. You can use it just like me in this scene. I was just using this image to create my own little world where I didn't really manipulate the actual scene. But also, you can use that to manipulate the shit out of it. You can use it for advertisement purposes or even VFX in general. And today I'm going to show you the foundation of this effect inside of Blender. Let's go. So in order to make this effect, you need a little more than just Blender. You need another software called FSpy which is a free software which is going to help you to align the vanishing points in your scene and that information you can translate into Blender so you know exactly where your camera has to be in order to build your actual environment. As I said, FSpy is for free. If you want to use that, I'm going to have a link in the description where you can download FSpy and use it in your Blender scenes. If you don't mind to spend a little money, you can use perspective plotter it's a blender plugin again it's not free but it basically does the same thing but it's inside of blender which is very cool so that makes just the workflow a little easier if that's a workflow you're planning on doing a lot i would definitely recommend getting perspective plotter also the link in the description so i'm going to show you the workflow with perspective plotter but it's basically the same like fspy so what we need for this effect is mainly a camera and I'm also going to use my little Miho here just for scale references which we know it's very important. So the first step is we click on our camera and then on the right here we see perspective plotter and now I do want to plot the perspective so I click on that. Now you can see the camera position changed already. My camera is up here right now and on my top view here, we can look through my camera, which is important. That's why I have two different 3D viewports, which I recommend you have too. Now, in order to plot any perspective, what we need is an image. What I'm using here is just an image I stole from Google, but you can use any image you want, as long as there's perspective lines in it. So that's the image I'm using. As you can see, the perspective lines they don't match at all. My little Miha here is standing in the middle of the building and it's uh, all weird. So we need to do a better job here. So the first step is when we scroll down here, we can see background unmatched because our video resolution of our render does not match our resolution of our image. So we can click on background unmatched and now it's matched. One more thing you want to do is while the camera selected, go in view and deselect camera to view. So now when you accidentally move the camera, you actually don't move the camera. You just look around. So with zero, we can go back here. So let's go back to perspective plotter. Now when we hit plot perspective, we can see our vanishing lines. So we have two axes. We have Y and we have X. So now we can decide, okay, I want my X axis to go to the right here. So I just take those two points here, those vanishing points, and find two lines inside your image, which are as long as possible. So that one works. And now I need to find uh, another line in the same direction, but as far away as possible. So let's try this one. So now I have two lines which show me the vanishing points. Now we can zoom in a little closer and the, um, refine our lines a little so it is as exact as possible that's something you don't want to rush you want it to be good so let's take the top of my building here and the line does not go here it actually goes here we can even extend it a little as long as this here is aligned sweet now we're going to do the same thing with the x-axis so i'm going to go to the top of my building here drop those two lines zoom a little closer to do a little better of a job to have it exact. I'm actually looking at this line here that this is perfectly aligned while I'm moving this because you want this lines to be as long as possible. So now I'll go on the other side and this is aligned. Sweet. Now I need one more. 
Where is my little bad boy? There it is. I'm gonna take this guy and let's use this line here. Wonderful. Now you can see our Michal is upside down, which is a headache. So we're gonna flip the Y axis here to negative Y. Now he's gonna face our way and looking straight. We're almost done here. Now what we need to do is get the right camera distance. And I'm gonna eyeball it here. I can just change this number. And that's why it's good to have my little Michal here. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna bring him down, target location, I'm gonna make it manual, and I'm gonna bring him to the ground. Okay, now you can see he's way too big for being in front of the building, so I'm gonna bring the distance further back until the scale matches, bring him back down. I see people here in the background, so basically I can just match that until the size matches. 40 meters, 40 meters it is. A little too small so I just play with those two two numbers until it matches he should be almost the size of this door great now this part is done and all of that was just to set it up we still have nothing in our 3d scene we only have my little Michal here so now our job is to rebuild this building with simple geometry so I'm looking at the shape it's somewhat off a cube so I'm gonna start with a cube shift a mesh cube now I know my Michal here is basically at the edge of the building so I'm gonna bring this somewhere here now in edit mode I can select the face here and bring it up until it reaches the top of the building somewhere here now I'm gonna select this face along the y-axis I'm gonna bring it to the edge of this building now I'm gonna select the other side and amongst the, uh, along the x-axis, I'm gonna bring it here. I can see that this side has to be sticking out a little more. So I'm gonna bring this out as well until it's aligned with the roof of the building. So that's my cube now. If you need to make micro adjustments, hold shift and then you can move it along a little smoother. Nice. One big deal is if we hide our cube, you can see the front is round. So let's just bevel this edge a little. So in edit mode, edge selection mode, which is two, select this edge here, hit con uh, control B. Now it's beveled. Now I can just scroll the mouse wheel until I have enough edges. So it's a smooth round corner. I'm looking at this, so it's nice and aligned. And that's basically it. Right click, shade smooth. And that's our building now. And of course, I'm not going to do that in this video, but if you want to build this entire scene, you would need to make the next building here. You can either, you know, select this face, inset it and make an, an, another building and extrude it and uh, make sure this is aligned and all, all that stuff. That's something you would need to do. But just to keep this video simple, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it like this because you do get the point now. The next step is we need to bring our image here on top of the building. And there is a very cool effect for that. You are going to use a modifier, actually two modifiers. The first modifier, let's go to the modifiers here, add modifier. The first one you need to use is the subdivision surface. Oh, that was the wrong one. The sub D, the subdivision surface. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. No, just kidding. We don't want that. So in the subdivision surface modifier, we click on simple. That's going to bring our geometry back. Now we need to improve this number, those two numbers here. Usually three or four does the trick for this. Now we need another modifier, the most important one, which is the UV project. And this is really where the magic happens. So under object here, we want to select our camera we're projecting from. Okay. And under aspect X and aspect Y, we need to go to our original image, which is right this, this thing here. That's my image, the image I'm using and go and right click properties. And those are the numbers I have to type in. It's 3,264 by 2,448. So I need to type in those two numbers. Three, two, six, four by two, four, Four, eight. Great. We still don't see anything for two reasons. We have to be in viewport for shading. And also 
we don't have any material on that yet okay so what we need to do is open up either make a new window the way I have it here or go to your shading tab I have a window because my screen is pretty big and I want you to see all of it at once the shader editor is what you need now click on new let's call this UV projection and now we have to bring in our image we were using so this guy I'm just going to drag and drop it in here connect this with the base color and now from this perspective we have a perfect UV projection so now I can go around my building and it's, it is perfectly project, projected on, on this geometry. And you can see issues like this here, for example, it doesn't line up perfectly. So what I would need to do is if I want it to be perfect, I go back to edit mode, make an edge loop like here, make an edge loop here, select those edges here and bring this closer and basically remodel my building a little more exact but it's really up to you how detailed you want to go or you have to go how much detail actually you're going to see so that's what you would need to do which i'm not going to do in this tutorial because it's just a tutorial so i just need to give you the right idea what you have to do so you can figure out the rest how about that now a few important things to know if you by accident move this camera your uv projection it's not going to work anymore. So don't move this camera ever again. Once you think you're done with this and you don't need to make any changes anymore for the UV projection, what you can do, what I don't always do, but what you can do is go on your modifiers. So go on your subdivision modifier and apply it. Then go on your UV project, apply it too. So now I don't need this camera anymore. This camera is only where I'm looking through. So now in the camera sections, what we need to do or in my render settings rather i need to i'm gonna have the resolution I, I want to render in which is this one now let's say for example what do we want to do here we want to open this wall here to have a monster coming out let's say so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select all those let's just go over to side view okay i'm gonna select these faces here let's go down here hit p and separate selection so now i'm gonna have a new mesh here which is just the wall here so basically you can just remove it and put something underneath it so at 10 seconds i'm just going to animate it i'm going to make something real quick i'm going to make another cube just to put it inside somewhat scale at the same size so i have something on the inside so i reach just the ground now i can give it a whole different material let's make it distinctively pink metallic up i'm going to make another model let's just uh, use the monkey from uh, blender scale up into the right size bring it inside so while our wall is going down the monkey could be coming out now in edit mode let's uh, select this face here we're just going to separate it too by selection we're just going to turn it off for now so we can just look inside so now we do have an inside in this building let's make it dark let's give our monkey a material too so now we're lighting the scene. I gave it an HDRI, so it's like even lit, but I also need a sunlight and I'm just trying to judge the sunlight of my actual scene. So looking at this is the sun is coming somewhere from the left because this side is more in the dark. I don't really see shadows here, but I feel like the sun is pretty straight up. Yeah, I can see it here a little. So I'm trying to adjust the sun. So shift A, give it a sunlight and rotate it in the same direction where I believe the sun should be. Under exposure, I'm gonna turn up the exposure a little so it matches my actual image a little better. And then your job is really to match the material of your building according to your original building so it kind of looks the same. So just the roughness, the metallic, the specular until it looks the same. I gave my inside cube another material, one from Polyhaven adjusted so it looks right. So once the door opens here, you can see something is going on inside too, which is a little nicer. Now, my result obviously is not the craziest effect ever, but think of the possibilities, the things you could make with that, like 3D advertisement, billboards, and the things you see sometimes on the internet. That's how you can make those things. So go ahead and get creative and make sure tag me in your post because I really want to see what you guys are coming up with. And I'm going to make a follow up video how to make an effect 
a little more precise, a little better to actually use that for advertisement purposes because that as is, you could not use as a 3D billboard because there's a few rules you have to follow. But I'm gonna talk about that in a different video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video. Toodoo.